welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we'd like to introduce you to Context Therapeutics. They're a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company recently listed on the NASDAQ, and their business is targeting female cancers. With me is their CEO, Martin Lair. Martin, welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, can we start this with a bit of a 101 about female cancers? Because I think if we start with that, it will help people understand your business and its unique take in this particular area. Absolutely. And I think it's actually helpful to think about it in terms of male and female cancers. So starting with male, the classical male cancer is prostate cancer, which is driven by the hormone testosterone. And then we have female cancers breast, ovarian, endometrial. And about 70% of those cancers are driven by hormones as well. But instead of testosterone, we have estrogen and progesterone driving those cancers. Now, what's fundamentally interesting is actually, uh, we've had very good estrogen blockers for almost 40 years. Uh, Edison's in the UK. So actually the, the discovery was made in the UK by Craig Jordan in the early 1980s that anti-estrogens could be used for breast cancer. But we still have progesterone signaling in those cancers, stimulating the cancer cells to grow. And so what context brings to the table with our lead program is a mechanism to block progesterone. So the idea being if you block both estrogen and progesterone, you'll get a beneficial effect. So what does this mean from a, a total population of, of patients? Well, the incidence and prevalence of these cancers is actually quite high. If you catch the cancers early, which is re what referred to as primary disease, so there's a lump in the breast or just a small mass in the ovary, you can remove that tissue. And for 90 to 95% of women, they will be cured for the rest of their life after surgery. And some may get chemotherapy or radiation as well. But for those five to 10% that relapse anywhere between a month later and 25 years later, that metastatic disease is incurable. And so our current treatment toolkit, while beneficial in some cases, could be vastly improved. And so that's what we want to do as a company. As you think about the total number of patients, there's almost a half a million women living with metastatic breast, ovarian, and endometrial cancer just between the United States and, and Western Europe. So it's an absolutely massive market. It's a massive market and there isn't really anything in the market at the moment, is that right? Targeting progesterone receptor, no. There are other approved antiprogestins for different indications, but their activity has been limited in cancer. And so we believe we would be the first FDA approved uh, antiprogestin for cancer. And that is your lead asset uh, on a right. stone. Absolutely. And what's really fascinating about this story is that first, of course, that you've identified this really unique opportunity, but also you're not from a, from a medical background, you're from a venture capital background. So how did you zero in on this? Yeah, so interesting enough, I spent my career in oncology, but in three different facets of oncology. So first, as a basic researcher at Sloan Kettering. Then I moved to the venture capital side, as you noted, where I was investing in oncology companies. And now I'm on the operating side, operating an oncology company. So science, investing, now operations. Uh, so I feel like I've seen the full life cycle uh, of oncology, uh, investing, operating, and, and research at this point. So that sounds like the perfect background to me. Now, tell me a bit more about the development pipeline for your lead asset. Yeah, so we actually have two exciting programs. Our lead asset is ONXR. Our second asset is a Claudin-6 bispecific. As it relates to ONXR, it's currently the subject of four ongoing mid-stage clinical trials. We are anticipating preliminary data from those trials in 2022, with the hope that at least one of those trials will uh, support data to underwrite a phase three trial that could start as soon as the end of 2023. On the heels of that, we have a really exciting bispecific antibody program 
targeting. Yes, can, I, can I just stop you there? Sorry to interrupt. Can I just stop you there? Just explain what a bispecific monoclonal antibody, which trips off your tongue very readily, but some yes. people may not know what it is. So antibodies look like the shape of a Y, and at the top of the Y, they have two binding arms. A monoclonal antibody will use both of those arms to bind to the same protein. What a bispecific does is it takes that same antibody, but it binds to two different proteins on each arm. In our case, we use one arm to bind to Claudin-6, which is a protein that is enriched in ovarian and endometrial cancers, but absent from normal healthy human tissue. And then on the other arm, we target CD3. And CD3 is expressed on T cells. And so the idea- so part of, of the immune system. Part of the immune system, exactly. So the idea is to bring the immune system these, these immune cells, these cytotoxic T cells that can eat the cancer cells potentially, bring those T cells in close proximity to the cancer cell. And that's the idea of the, the bispecific. Uh, so that program's going exceedingly well. Uh, we acquired the monoclonal in April of this year from a company called Integral Molecular. We've subsequently developed it as a bispecific and we'll be providing programmatic updates in the first half of 22 related to that program. Now, how does that acquisition fit into your overall plans going forward? I mean, for instance, we'll be looking at other in-licensing opportunities in the near or medium term. I, I think we will. Context as a whole is meant to be an independent biotech company. Uh, we have ONAXR that's progressing nicely in mid-stage trials. On the heels of that, we have our Claudin-6 bispecific antibody in preclinical development. And so I think going a little earlier and developing another bispecific would make a lot of sense for our company. We're gaining expertise in that area. Claudin-6 is a class of proteins called oncofetal protein. So maybe expanding into to more uh, oncofetal proteins, as an example, uh, would make sense for a company. But we're always evaluating opportunities to expand, augment uh, our pipeline. Uh, but certainly, we are very excited about our, our two lead programs and think that is sufficient to drive the company forward, at least for the time being. And what about uh, the plans for your asset pipeline in terms of commercializing it? Um, now, are you going to take those products to the market on your own, or are you going to seek partners? What's your plan? Yeah, so oh, oh, currently the plan is that we will uh, be the, the lead driver for all of our assets. I think any company has to assume that going in and raise the capital uh, to underwrite that commercialization process, whether it be equity, debt, uh, or royalty financing, or, or some other alternative form of capital. Um, but I do not ever need to necessarily be a commercial company. Um, that's not my, my expertise currently. And so the idea of partnering with someone with an established sales force in women's oncology, I think would make a lot of sense, but that requires a, a meeting of the minds and a deal that makes sense for our shareholders. So we'll see where our data uh, takes us and where those discussions take us over time. Now, you recently raised funds from a private placement. What does your cash runway look like now? And what options would you consider for further run fundraising? Yep. So it's been a very productive, actually, six-week period for uh, our company. So over the last six weeks, we've raised about $60 million in gross proceeds uh, for the company. We publicly disclosed that that capital gets us into 2024, which is tremendous for us. That gives us a lot of uh, operating leverage over the next two years to execute our clinical trials for ONXR and really push forward a robust development plan for our Claudin-6 bispecific. Uh, currently, we have no plans to uh, fundraise, but uh, that's depending on the market uh, data that we have. Uh, and if there are interested investors uh, in our company, certainly one of our goals for 22 is to increasingly bring in institutional investors uh, in the company. The pipe that you mentioned that we completed on December 1st brought in five institutional investors, which was tremendous for our company, and we're really excited about them. And these are groups that we've had a number of conversations with dating back to, to early summer. And so we'd like to get more groups 
uh, like those institutional funds into our name over this year. So finally, Martin, what's 2022 looking like for context? What milestones should investors be looking out for? And how's COVID going to affect your trials? I'm, I'm, I'm presuming because it's, it's oncology, actually that hasn't been as affected as some other areas in terms of trial recruitment. So 2022, I guess the best way to describe it is it's going to be busy for us. Um, we are firing on all cylinders from an R&D and g &A standpoint. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our ONA XR program will have preliminary data uh, from all four of our clinical trials that will be disclosed. Uh, Claudin 6 continues to mature. Uh, we have a number of conferences in 22 related to academic conferences such as AACR and San Antonio Breast and the like, where we will be presenting updates on our programs. And so we want to orient investors to those time points uh, as meaningful catalysts for uh, the company. Uh, and certainly there may be opportun opportunistic uh, times when we can provide updates uh, as well. COVID is a reality for us. Uh, it's endemic at this point. Um, at times it does impact our, our trials depending on the location. Uh, but it ebbs and flows. I think on balance, we've been very happy uh, with how our, our trials have been enrolling. And so as of now, it, it does not uh, present a material challenge for the company, but that's not to say that could not change uh, tomorrow. And I think that's a risk that, that we all face going forward. Thank you so much for talking to us, Martin. It's been a real pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much.